I haven't met anyone who spent nine summers with Satyajit Ray. Between 83 and 91, I think That's every right. summer you kind of met him. You, him yeah. you went to him. What was that like? Oh my God. How many was... people claim to do that? I'm mad, yeah. Uh, but it's amazing. I have a stash of letters actually from him that we exchanged. It was remarkable. I mean, I just literally. Well, I met him because he came to Cambridge, Massachusetts with Shatranj Ke Khiladi, with, uh, you know, with Suresh Jindal, the producer. And, and Suni and I went to hear him in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and we couldn't get in. And I just wrangled a way in for us somehow. I can't remember how. And then even wrangled a way into dinner with, the, with him and the party that night, you know. And that's what, you know, there's this Ivy League confidence that being in these fancy colleges gives you. You just think, what can be worse? They can just say no, right? So let's yeah. try to make a yes, you know. <laughs> anyway, I, I set up communication with him because wanting to assist him, basically. Um, but I was making, doc and, and whatever, it didn't work out to work with him on a film. But when I was, and then I have this theory that when I meet those I admire, I, I really don't like to meet those I admire uh, unless I have something to offer them, unless I have something to share with them. Otherwise, ke haanji, I am so-and-so. You know, it's not much fun. So when I finished my first film, second film, uh, first film out of college, uh, So Far From India, which was a cinema verite documentary, I literally got it under my arm, the 16 millimeter reel, two reels, and took a projector and, and set up to go to one by one Bishop Lefroy Road where uh, Manikta lived and climbed up those things with the projector and the thing. And then his lovely wife, Vijayadi, showed me the veranda and said, here, you can put it up here, the projector. <laughs> and I put down the chicks, you know, and, and then I put up the projector and I put up the reel and, lit, can you, and I just projected it on his screen, on his wall. And he sat there patiently, 52 minute film. And and it's a completely, it's not a fiction film. It's a totally cinema verite as life was. It's about a, a Gujarati uh, young man who leaves Ahmedabad to come and work in the subways here. And his wife gives birth to uh, his son back home. He goes back and we go back with him. And, and the son looks just like him, but doesn't know the father. And he doesn't want to speak to the wife because the wife is uh, a peasant in his mind and he's American and he doesn't want to take her back. There's all this estrangement. So they, they end up speaking, both of them, husband and wife, to my camera. And it, I'm, the, I'm the median between them. And Mr. Ray sees the whole thing. And he said to me, you know, if you had cast a more attractive woman, he would have gone back with her. And, <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, but I didn't cast anyone. I just chose the one young man and then followed his life. And, and I inherited his world as this is this style of filmmaking, you know. But he had never seen this style of filmmaking. Uh, documentaries at that time, we're talking early 80s, were about how much coal the government had made or newsreel type of things. It wasn't about dramas of people's lives, you know. So he didn't really had any experience of this type, you know. And so, and then, but I, I was quite halting because I don't know how, how, how much to speak to the great man, you know. I, I don't think I gave him any lecture on it. I just said to him, you know, I didn't cast anyone. Um, and then we would basically sit in his study and he would, um, he, he loved actually a bit of gossip, you know, he would love the, he would love to hear of what other films were going on, other film directors, you know, in those worlds where, you know, we would talk like that. And then as I would go even in later years, it would be like Adda's in his office study, just like his own movies, like, just like, uh, you know, the, uh, the, just like so many films he'd done. So all these librarians and other people and all like feeding him the great reviews of Pathar Panchali from the 50s. You know, he, he did like hearing those <laughs> things. He would, he would, he would uh, laugh also. And, uh, and it was just, it was just really lovely. And, and um, he was porous, you know, he, 
I didn't I, I I didn't interview him or anything like that, but I just saw how he just the extraordinary the extraordinary you know like his, just his graphics, then his music, then you know the the writing. I mean, I just saw everything around him and how he you know used it and never you know it was never about commerce or money. It was always about you know finding a way to tell his tale you know and he did it with such beauty and finesse but uh, and as it as he got older it was it was harder and 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 so but he was amazing and then and then he wrote that beautiful thing you showed about salam bombay and i asked him to open salam bombay he he opened salam bombay at nandan theater um in uh, calcutta uh, and he was on a wheelchair by then and i remember wheeling him actually into the to the balcony and i just couldn't sit there i sat outside i was so nervous to watch the conversations on dial m for films subscribe to our youtube channel geomami mumbai film festival